Chen, yeah. it's always a pleasure to be in your gallery. Always there seems to be something new and exciting. And despite the fact that you are really quite busy working and writing, and always conceiving something more exciting, uh, this is very, very impressive. But in trying to reflect on your work and what I know about you, it would seem that you are really more than an artist, you are also an educator and a scholar. Tell us a little bit about your background and what are the forces that drive you in this rather exciting work of art. I was a graduate uh, from the Department of the Foreign Languages and Literature uh, in Taiwan University. Uh, but my passion is to be an artist. Uh, I got the scholarship from the French government in 1963, and that is for me to study literature, mm -hmm. to train me as a, a French professor. But my passion and my ambition still in finance, in creation. And I like the most Renaissance, that is the golden age of human history. So in 1964, when I was uh, in Paris, the first trip I took uh, was to go to Florence, Milenje. And there I was inspired uh, by the masterpieces by the spirit of that age which created the Renaissance. And suddenly I got the revelation that now the whole humanity needs a new Renaissance, a global new Renaissance. So I, I, such kind of uh, curiosity uh, led me uh, to research, so a kind of uh, scholastic uh, study uh, and a kind of expectation which leads me to formulate my cultural view on civilizations. Dr. Chen, this is something that impresses and, and interests us very much. What are your cultural views on civilization? Is this okay. the new iconography or...? Uh, I... Okay, I have formulated as a, a kind of a simplified theory or cultural view called five-dimensional world culture. And that is in 1969. Uh, as you know, 1969 is the landing of the moon by American astronauts. Right. And at that time, suddenly I discovered this is not only just a big event for science, for technology, but a big event in human civilization. And so it's, it was interesting that you say this because uh, the astronaut who foot, put his foot on the moon first time so it was one small step for a man, one giant heap for humanity. Right. And then I discovered that our cultural ecology is shifting from divergence to convergence. And the shifting point, the symbolic point, is the landing of the moon. If we like to, to, to draw a line to uh, separate the ongoing period and the, our actual period, I think that in 1969. Mm -hmm. And if we regard uh, Einstein as the most important person for 20th century, for the morality, I think if we term that as fourth dimension, because time to him is a fourth dimension, right. so we may term our new age as fifth dimension. The fifth dimension. The fifth dimension. Mm -hmm. And what is fifth dimension? Because the fourth dimension, the relationship of space and time is relative. Okay. And in Newton's period, they thought, at that time, mankind thought that time and space are not relative. Right. Time to time, space is space. But in our age, I think time and space combine together. Where? In our brain, in our soul. So, so where? Soul is a fifth dimension. Do you have the elements of your theory of these five dimensions? Yes, I have. So I classify the progress of human civilization right. in five uh, steps. Mm -hmm. If we classify 20th century modern age mm -hmm. as fourth dimension, our age as fifth dimension, then what is the three dimension? Right. What is the two dimensional culture? What is the one dimensional culture? I think we human beings are animals. <laughs> a part of the, of the animals. But when we know how to use a tool and we invent science, characters, 
for our abstract thinking, then we separate from the animal. Right. And such kind of uh, separation of our civilization that's uh, one dimension of culture. Right. And with this separation, I think we develop into uh, into a kind of speculation in theory uh, or in beliefs or anything. That means development of our civilization through characters, through signs, through alphabet, through one, two, three, all this. So with this, I think we enter into two-dimensional culture. And uh, if we uh, scope the whole, all uh, civilizations, I think the Chinese civilization based on the two poles of yin and yang, such kind of philosophy, but at the center of their civilization, I think is the best example of two-dimensional culture. Right. So that happened in the East. And at the same time, I think on the West, we have Egyptian culture. We have Greek culture. We have Roman culture. We have Judeo-Christianity. In this uh, about uh, 3,000 years, and then through the Dark Age, the Middle Age, and in Renaissance, these four main cultures around the Mediterranean Sea converge together and have a new life, new creation. And that is the Italian Renaissance, which became the base, the base of Western culture. And as a three-dimensional, because they have God, man, and machine. Okay. As Trinity. So that's the three dimension. And with this uh, Renaissance, I think they emphasize, they highlight the, the ratio, nationalism, the reasoning based on the fact, on, the, on, on science. So with this science, we, have, uh, we make machine, and we have uh, industrial revolution, then we have exploration through the whole world, and then we have capitalism, and we have the World War, pure 20th century. And with 20th century, I think, because of Einstein, we have nuclear bomb. We enter in, into nuclear age, and that's a post-dimensional age. Mm -hmm. And that is this age of division. Divergency. Because if you, you, you can divide atom, we have nuclear, we have the division in extract. So science is almost a symbol. It's a right? symbol of the divergence. Uh, after the Second World War, the, uh, the, uh, the most important philosopher, he was Jesuit and other same times under politics and, and scientists. He has a vision. He said, after the age of atom, prepare for the whole humanity mm -hmm. an age of life. Mm -hmm. So I think in this in the first dimension, this age of convergence, an age of life, age of oneness. Because if you look at the Earth, our planet, from the moon or from the space, we are one. We are not divided. So such kind of, of photos taken from the space, I think just an impact, give us an impact that we are one. And our, our Earth is so fragile, but so beautiful. So we have the consciousness of environment. We have to protect our environment. We, we share this, this small, fragile, beautiful Earth. Excellent. And then I think you really uh, brought it home to us by saying there's been a, a new consciousness now when we saw ourselves from space that we are one. We are one. And this is perhaps that this new unity right. that I think may become the driving force right. as we move into the future. Right. And I think United Nations is a symbol of unity. Great symbol of that. I remember that the United Nations not only declare uh, international day of tolerance, but declare the first decade of our new century as a decade for the cultural decade for the cultural and dialogue. dialogue. I think this is a good change and good phenomenon mm -hmm. for whole humanity. Mm -hmm. And I think it is time to mobilize, to mobilize artists and the people of good wills uh, to work with United Nations. And I think because such kind of global concern, the consciousness 
she's such kind of conscience awakening of global concern, not only happen in, in the level of international, national or regional, but in individual too. I think this gives hope that we can mobilize, we can organize such kind of goodwill world citizen all over the world to work together with the United Nations. The United Nations, as you know, is pushing very, very hard right. to promote the concepts mm -hmm. of tolerance, mm -hmm. to encourage cooperation, right. to encourage a respect for diversity. Right. Right. Is there a place for the artist in helping us move this agenda forward? I think if uh, we have the opportunity, I think it is urgent. I, I think such kind of uh, change in attitude of the United Nations encourage every, every chapter, uh, every sector, every individual to involve uh, in this campaign, campaign for peace, for tolerance and for love through everything, especially through us. Because us is heart pouring, us is a passion. Art is enjoyment at the same time. And art doesn't hurt everybody, but make everybody uh, happy and, and conscious of uh, the message inside. In other words, you're saying that heart does not hurt, it heals. It heals. And let me ask you this. Uh, the United Nations is, as declared as you know, the decade for culture of peace mm -hmm. and nonviolence. Mm -hmm. But for this to work, we've got to engage the world. Right. in a new global campaign right. and we now have even more reasons mm -hmm. to become concerned mm -hmm. about the culture of peace and non-violence. Mm -hmm. I would like to propose to you mm -hmm. that as an artist you join us so, in a new global tour, a new global campaign of art in the service of no peace. No problem, I'm willing to cooperate with you under your guidance. Mm -hmm. your message, the message is that you believe that the artist can design and develop those messages that might encourage us to become more peaceful and to build this culture of peace? Uh, certainly. I, I think I have uh, formulated my art as neo-iconography. And this is a kind of development from art for art's sake to art for life's sake to art for humanity's sake. Dr. Chen, you have pioneered a new art style. I think you have characterized it as neo-iconography. Yes. It's an art, I think, that is designed for our time. What are the elements of neo-iconography? Formulated in 1969 and appeared in the early 1970s, neo-iconography is an art style developed by me for our new age of globalization, where the synthesis of all cultures, East and West, past and present, etc., are mingled together, highlighting icons of human traditions and experiences to be recreated in a new expressive way with message, meaning, and insight, and aesthetic impact. Since globalization is a process of expansion, convergence, and integration, all concerns and humanity appearing became the spiritual backbone of this art aiming at a global new renaissance towards tolerance, harmony, peace, and love. It's an art developed from art for art's sake, to us for life's sake, to us for humanity's sake, to match our age of interdependence and global village. Artistically speaking, icons from different cultures coexist in a constructive, meaningful composition executed in possible appropriate different techniques. It manifests the multiculturalism as well as the symphonic prosperity of our world in rich diversity. Icons, public images with certain meanings, emerging to be symbols of cultures, became the distinguished vocabulary for artistic creation of our time with convergence as its cultural ecology. It's quite natural that neo-iconography will prevail as one of the most expressive means of the 21st century, which will help people to establish their neo-eye to match our age of high-tech and software.
S O U L w e l l Tonight we're here to acknowledge the primacy of human rights and tolerance in this transitional era, an era of moral and psychological disorientation where cherished values are being undermined. It is doubly appropriate then that this year we have focused on the arts, for nothing serves us so well to help us understand such transition and work through their moral ambiguities. The Global Tolerance Award recognizes individuals and institutions who have significantly advanced the cause of tolerance by their unwavering determination to combat racism, prejudice, anti-Semitism, and hate crimes. And gentlemen, I might add that Dr. Chen is a cultural ambassador for the Friends of the United Nations and has offered to launch a major global campaign on tolerance through the arts. So we want to thank him twice. Thank you, Dr. Chen. Art can be used as a vehicle for transforming and unifying the world. The United Nations has taken initiatives to utilize the artistic, cultural, religious, and spiritual communities to contribute to creating world peace and harmony. For in this age of advanced technology, besides hardware and software, we are also called to cultivate soulware, S-O-U-L, where, a new spirit of love and globalism. This is an announcement for the Art for Humanity World Tour. The T.F. Chan Art for Humanity Foundation is proud to announce the Art for Humanity World Tour in support of art education and a global culture of peace. The tour will travel to many universities and museums and will be accompanied by educational programs, competitions, and scholarships. Become a Foundation member and receive a complimentary art book. Dr. T.F. Chan is a master artist, a recipient of the Global Tolerance Award, and a cultural ambassador of peace with the Friends of the United Nations. Dr. Chen's art reflects the achievements of our humanity and inspires cultural harmony. In 1969, Chen established five-dimensional world culture and initiated neo-iconography, a form of global communication through art. We need a culture of to love instead of to have, not just the hardware and software but also soulware. It's important for each of us to take a stand for a peaceful world. Your cultural contribution will help ensure the success of our tour.